Previously on Kangazang Remote Possibilities, Earth nincompoop Jeff Spooner and his alien barber Ray are in a spot of trouble. Having left Earth on a trip to Ray's home planet of Kangazang, they've been captured by mad Amazon Queen Shelley of Profania. Jeff has managed to pass three difficult but not impossible trials, and the pair have been sent out into the desert in search of the fabled Universal Remote Control, an item that is said to no longer exist. Will they find it before they start visualizing each other as roasted chickens like they do in the cartoons? Chapter 5 Ruling with an Ironic Fist Across the galaxy, young Kelvin, newly appointed evil overlord of the Scrag Empire, took his father's throne for the first time. It was a magnificent chair, assembled entirely of bones and skulls of vanquished enemies, and lovingly coated in gold, silver and ebony. To a human, it looked like H.R. Giger had thrown up all over it. Unfortunately, where it previously did a good job of accentuating the sinister presence of Lord Rancid, it had the opposite effect on Kelvin, dwarfing him and making him look like a small doll within its bony embrace. He'd placed a small cushion under his royal bottom to help alleviate the pain of his uncomfortable position. It helped a bit, but he had to wonder if sitting for hours on a bone throne in considerable discomfort was what made his late father the bad-tempered dictator that he was. He'd been in office now for just over an hour, and already hated it. On a regular basis, peasants and various military leaders were brought in front of him, and all he had to do was give the thumbs down, and they got carried off and thrown into the razor crab tanks. It was boring and repetitive, and as he hadn't inherited Dad's lust for blood, it wasn't even any fun to watch. He'd rather be watching cartoons on the telly, but was advised by his dark ministers that such behaviour was unbecoming of the evil overlord. As tedious as that was, he was due a visit from the Intergalactic Tax Inspection Office. He'd been told that the position of evil overlord brought with it not only a phenomenal wage packet, but some attractive tax benefits, a handsome pension scheme, and regular deliveries of clean monogrammed socks. The doors to his throne room swung open, and a trio of suited, balding men with briefcases walked in, a little hesitantly. Speak! called Kelvin, trying to get into the spirit of things. My lord, we represent the Intergalactic Tax Inspection Office, and are here to pay tribute to your late father, and also to ensure the fiscal stability of your reign, which we humbly wish to be as long and as fruitful of that of... Silence! interrupted Kelvin. Being the most feared man in the galaxy had its plus points. One didn't have to be concerned with manners, small talk, and most of all, sycophantic waffling bean counters. Looking down at the arm of his throne, he noticed a small round button with a skull engraved onto it. Things just got interesting. Tell me, asked Kelvin, how is the company doing? One of the trio of pinstriped lackeys stepped forward, opening his briefcase. My lord, the Empire is uniquely positioned to reap enlarged and substantial financial rewards in the next quarter. Further to that, exports and imports are steadily providing additional monetary stability. He went on for at least another minute in vague multisyllabic prose, until Kelvin had completely lost track of the sentence's original subject. Silence! he yelled again. He pressed the button on his chair. Instantly the man was turned to grey dust with a bright flash. Pointing at one of the other taxmen, he tried again. You, tell me, are we making money? And try to be concise for Bod's sake. The stuttering man, still dusted with the ashes of his late colleague, tried to explain to the best of his ability, but when you're a scholar of the finest mathematical teaching and faced with a patienceless, ruthless and, quite frankly, clueless dictator, there's always going to be a little language barrier. My lord, shares are up, and are set to flourish annually, developing into a considerable silence! Another flash, another pile of dust. It wasn't going well. The last of the accountants realised it was up to him to provide a clear answer. My lord, he began shaking visibly. You're, uh, loaded. Filthy rich, to be honest. Kelvin smiled. Finally, someone was talking in a language he understood. Oh, what can I afford? he asked, rubbing a pair of sweaty palms together in greedy anticipation of the answer. Anything, replied the little man, mopping his perspiring brow with a handkerchief, allowing himself a little smile of relief. Anything, said Kelvin. What about a house? No, wait a minute, a city. A country. Can I buy a country? he asked, frothing over with excitement. My lord, you can buy planets. Entire systems, if you desire. The accountant was getting more confident. All he had to do was to remember to translate his thoughts into a more readily understandable dialogue, and things would go swimmingly. Kelvin bounced up and down in his throne in the manner of a young child approaching the seaside in their parents' car. Oh, oh, I want one. How do I go about it, then? he gushed. Well, first you need to release the considerable equity currently withheld in your portfolio of silence! Flash! Bang! Dust! Silence!
Kelvin sat back in his chair. This dictator lark wasn't as bad as he first thought it'd be. End of chapter 5